name is Arlene Dahl, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret, brought to you tonight by Scope. The new mouthwash that's so powerful, first thing in the morning, and your breath feels fresher for hours. From New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you very much. Welcome to another edition of What Else? Uh, now that we've met Arlene Dahl, let's meet the dolls on our panel. And to tell you the truth, panel, tonight I think I've really exhausted my creative capacities. I've run out of ways to introduce you. So, Henry, just for a switch, will you introduce Betsy and then Betsy Bellasaw right down the line? Introduce yourselves. I would like to introduce a lady about whom I have been asked thousands of times, is she as nice as she seems to be? The answer is yes, Betsy Palmer. Oh. Thank you very much, Henry. May I say the same is true of you, too? No, you got to introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to my left is a gentleman who, if I were ever left anywhere, I'd like to be with Bill Cullen. This is, this is beginning to abut upon the romantic. Yes. But may I say to my left, if I were ever to be left anywhere with two people. <laughs> I want a blonde hair and a tall brunette, Bess Myerson. Thank you. And on my left is a gentleman of whom I've been asked a thousand times, what is he really like? <laughs> well, he's dear and sweet and adorable and lovely. Who else? Who? Henry Morgan. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I would like to introduce the young lady of whom I have uh, about no, whom I have been asked. Oh, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to introduce you? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I don't on. think we have any compliments <laughs> left over. I'll just say immediately, let's get to our first contestant, please. <laughs> Nice to have you with us, sir. Would you uh, make yourself comfortable there and tell us your name and where you're from? My name is Charles Alexander. I'm from Manchester, Connecticut. Mr. Uh, Alexander is involved in aeronautical research and testing, and he recently made a very unusual experimental flight. The thing that was uh, really unusual, panel, was what he did after the plane took off. So, uh, Mr. Alexander, if you'll whisper to me, we'll show the audience just what did happen. Uh-huh. Well, that's not terribly unusual. Tell me a little bit more, if you would. Wow. <laughs> Panel, the clue to Mr. Uh, Alexander's secret concerns something he did, of course, and we'll start the game with Betsy Palmer. Charles, were you inside of the airplane when you did this? Uh, not originally. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you said that you flew an airplane? Or Steve said you flew an airplane? No, an airplane was involved. An airplane was involved. Yes. Ah, but you didn't start off in the airplane. No, he did start yes. off in the Oh, it, he yes. did start off in the airplane. But you left the airplane somewhere along the line, Charles? Yes. In mid-air, I hope not for your sake? I did. You did. Did you have a parachute on you? Yes, I did. Uh, you uh, left the plane in a parachute, and that crazy plane came around and picked you up again before you <laughs> hit the ground. Uh, uh, the answer to that is no, that crazy plane did not. $20 down, and Bill Cullen. But you did leave the airplane in flight. You jumped out, and you pulled the cord, did you? Yes. And now you're coming down in a parachute, and now that's what we want to find out. What happened then? Is that right? Yes. Well, let's see. <laughs> you only had one? You had one parachute only? I was wearing an, a safety shoe, a safety reserve, shoe. but you didn't use that. No. So now your secret actually occurred while you're coming down in the parachute. Right. Does it concern the plane from which you jumped? No. Does it? Does it concern where you landed? No. How you landed? Um, in a sense, yes. On what you landed? <laughs> I mean, like what part of your body? Is Not there that. Is there air, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. How, how you landed? 
not where, but how. Was it a normal landing? I mean, you obviously walked away no. from it. In a tree? Mm -hmm. No, this is kind of a tough one here. $40 down. Best? Charles, did you make contact with anything else in the air while you were coming down? Yes, I did. <laughs> could, it, could it have been another plane? Yes, it could have. Did you then parachute to another plane, and were you picked up by this other plane? Yes, yeah, that's it. When I said that Charles Alexander made a very unusual experimental flight, of course, I was understating the case. Actually, he made aviation history. He is the first human in history ever to make a parachute jump from one plane and be picked up by another plane in midair, as uh, our panel figured out. Now, uh, yes, it was intentional. You see, he's uh, actually uh, a parachute engineer for the Pioneer Aerodynamics Corporation. And Chuck, why was this particular test made? Uh, we were demonstrating a technique which we hope will be used to rescue pilots, military pilots who have to escape over enemy territory. Now, how many uh, jumps in all have you made during your career as a parachutist? 858. Well, you certainly know what you're doing then. Now, you must have made some special uh, preparations for this particular experiment. What were they? Yes, we uh, dropped a rubber, rubber dummy uh, a little over 25 times, I believe, and picked it up before we went live. I see. Then you saw that it could be done. How right. fast was the plane that caught you flying? About 120 miles an hour. Now, what about the whiplash or what have you? Wasn't it kind of a shock to be snapped up at 120 miles an hour? Uh, no, it really wasn't. It was uh, about like the opening of my uh, parachute when I first jumped. I see. And how were you pulled up into the plane? Uh, the, uh, the line, uh, which was hooked into my parachute, was attached to a winch in the airplane, and I was just reeled in. Well, I guess the, uh, the best way to show just how dangerous and complicated being picked up by a plane in mid-air is uh, to show you the thing happening. And we have some film of Mr. Alexander's famous jump, which we're going, going to show you right now. We'll dim the lights now, and uh, here is the film. Will you tell us what we're seeing, sir? This is the retrieval plane taking off. My parachute is opening right now, and if you'll watch the top of the screen, you'll see the uh, plane come by and hook that small chute above me. And there you go. You're hooked. Wow. And you're going about 120 right there. Right now, I'm about 120 miles an hour. I see. And that's the view from inside the plane? This is right. This is looking out the tailgate, the open tailgate. I see. And about how long did it take him to reel you in, so to speak? Uh, five and a half minutes, mm -hmm. I think it was. Well, that certainly looks like fun. Look at that. We can see how that uh, technique could be a tremendous lifesaver for military pilots uh, forced to bail out over uh, unfriendly territory. Mr. Alexander, thank you so much for sharing your remarkable experience with us. Thank you. We'll be back in a minute with our next contestant after this message. How may we have our next contestant, please? to have you fellows with us. Will you tell us your names, please, and where you're from? Bert Rutchishar, Manesson, Pennsylvania. Bill Shear, Appalachian, New York. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rutchishar, if I correctly pronounced it, sir? Correct. Rutchishar is a former professional athlete, and uh, Bill Shear on my left is a college student, but uh, they do, of course, share a secret panel. So, Mr. Rutchishar, if you will whisper to me your part of the secret, please. Uh-huh. Now, Bill Shear, you're part of the secret. <laughs> the clue to these gentlemen's secret concerns something they did, and we'll start the game with Bess Meyerson. Gentlemen, this thing that you both did, uh, did it concern sports? Yes. yes. Bert, uh, were you some kind of instructor? No. To Bill, no. Any kind of superior in terms of what the event was? No, ma'am. Um, was it uh, a record, possibly, that Bill set? Did you set a record, Bill? Yes. And uh, would it help us to know in what particular sport? I imagine it would. Yes. Outdoors? Yes. Team sport? Yes. Football? Yes. Yes. Um, now, where? On the field. Let's see. Good Let's start. See. Best $20 down. Henry Morgan. You were uh, a school a student at the time. Yes. 
Are you still? Yes. Then was the record a record held by some other student formerly before you broke it? Yes. Does it have anything to do with time? No. Does it have anything to do with endurance? No. Speed? No. Um, does it have anything to do with the football itself? <laughs> yes. yes. Very much. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Were you kicking it? Yes. yes. All righty. Does it have to do with height? <laughs> Distance? Yes. <laughs> Distance? Distance, yes. Okay. Then, you kicked the football further than any school kid your age and weight ever did before, which is... Or is it a field goal? Yes. Oh! You substantially got it, Henry. <laughs> uh, that is it. Well, but I, do I need the distance or what? Well, we could probably spend all night trying to get the exact uh, measurement to the inch. Oh, you broke his record then. Yeah. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's always quite remarkable to break a record, but this is something special. Mr. Rushishar here is famous in the annals of professional sports for establishing a record 13 years ago, a record that all those years had never been broken or tied, as a member of the Baltimore Colts in 1953, he kicked the longest field goal in professional uh, history, professional football history, which was 56 yards. And then Bill Shear is now uh, famous because as a place kicker for Cortland State University, he just kicked a field goal that was five yards longer. But uh, nobody in the NFL has ever come even near your record in all those 13 years. Uh, did it surprise you that it was a college player who finally broke your record? Yes, it did, Steve, because uh, in professional football, the occasion would arise much more so than in college. I see. Now, Bill, prior to kicking that 61-yarder of yours, uh, what was your longest kick? Well, I've had two 40-yarders, then I kicked the 61-yarder, and the week after, I had a 51-yarder. Oh, my goodness. Now, Bert, prior to kicking your 56-yard uh, record field goal, what was your longest kick? Prior to that, that was my first attempt, Steve. No kidding. Correct. Well, beginner's luck is the obvious comment, but I can't resist making it. Yes, Sir Betsy. I don't mean this to be draggy, and I don't mean this to sound like a very stupid question. It is. Mm -hmm. I am not very knowing about sports. How far is the length of the whole field? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, only so I can judge it for what you did. A <laughs> hundred yards. But... It's a hundred yards, so you kicked over a hundred yards. You I know, mean, over I halfway. Bessie may take the award back. <laughs> no, 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 I just you know, wondered. No, the only thing I find amusing about it, Bert, I remember your kicking, of course, when I go back to Armand Nikolai as far as field goal kicking is concerned, but it's amazing that Bill broke your record and he's not even Hungarian. <laughs> Bill, do you uh, intend to take up football as a uh, professional activity after you get out of college? I think I will if I get a chance. You'll get a chance, kick my ass. <laughs> sure. You sure will. Well, gentlemen, uh, thanks so much to both of you for being with us tonight. It's always a pleasure to meet real friends. Thank you very much. <laughs> Incidentally, in order to protect Bill Shear's amateur status, he has asked that his prize money be donated to the Cortland State University Men's Athletic Association. We have refused his request. <laughs> See if you're paying attention. We'll meet our special guest for the evening in a minute after this. Now it's time to meet our special guest, one of the world of motion pictures' loveliest women, beauty expert, and author of the book titled Always Ask a Man. Here is Miss Arlene Dahl. So nice to have you with us. How is that beauty book of yours doing, by the way? Oh, it's doing just fine, Steve. It's uh, sold over 200,000 copies already. Well, that is remarkable. Mm. Uh, panel, Arlene has a secret for you to guess, naturally, or she wouldn't be here this evening. So, Arlene, if you'll whisper that secret to me, we'll let the audience All know right. what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I happen to know another fact that makes that even more remarkable. The, uh, the clue panel concerns something we did for Miss Dahl. Aren't we devils, as uh, Ralph Edwards used to say? We'll start the questioning with Henry Morgan. Okay, Henry. 
What did you do for Miss Nile that I couldn't do? <laughs> you could have done it, Henry. I could, really? Yes, and I wouldn't put it past you, as they say. <laughs> um, this thing that was done for you, Miss Dahl, was something um, created for you? Yes. Well, it was music. I couldn't have done it. Um, oh, dear. When I say you could have done it, I mean you could have done what we did. That doesn't mean much to you, but it means a lot to me. <laughs> if I had done it, would I sit around saying, we did it? <laughs> Probably, yes. Uh-huh. Would I be laughing and happy? Yes, happily. <laughs> kind of thing that bring the roses back to my cheeks? I thought they were always there. Well, that's makeup. <laughs> Actually, that's a touch of TB, too. <laughs> I got lost before I had my mouth open. <laughs> Twenty dollars down. It's now uh, second down and 18 yards to go. <laughs> and Betsy Palmer. <laughs> Arlene, did you do this to each other? <laughs> no, I, cer I no. certainly hope not. No, no, no. We he did it to you. No, that isn't the point. It's. Uh, well, you just said you did no, something we, together. No, for her. For her. Yes. You did it. Did Steve do it for you? Yes. Mm hmm. Is this something that he did to you, uh, for you? Was it physical? <laughs> in a way, yes. In a way, it was physical. Does it have to do with any part of your body more than another part of your body? <laughs> I told you this wasn't going to work, Steve. <laughs> there is uh, an anatomical association here. That's a blanket question. I, is it from the... Um, Red box up. Is it from the... <laughs> <laughs> Is it from the bread box? Bread up? box stuff. That's what Bill wanted to know. That's not what I want to know. That's what he wants to know. We'll get your chance, Bill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I'd like it's all <laughs> Forty dollars down and very little of anything has been established as may yet. I, may I ask a question, Steve? What is a bread box? That's, that's, that's what Steve used to have with him on What's My Line in the old. <laughs> that's another matter. Oh, all uh, right. Bill? Actually, no. What, did Steve personally do this for you, Arlene? No, actually, I think, forget all that, that we perhaps misled you with that suggestion. But that's all we know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way, Arlene, if I might. Would you permit, you said Henry could have done it, meaning, you know, it, it was possible. Would you have permitted Henry to do this? I said created something. Oh, that's, that's a better thought to get that's, back to than yes. that someone did something it's for It's a creative him. effort. Yes. Does it have to do with the way you look tonight? Yes. Which is a lovely song, isn't oh, it? Lovely. Yeah. Uh, is it your earrings, which are lovely? No, thank you, no. You're welcome. Your hair? No. No, I did that to myself tonight. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but you're narrowing the territory there. Bill, $60 down. Mm -hmm. That's my answer. All right. Uh, is it something that uh, we can see? Yes, partially. We can see just partially. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, it's from the waist up as well as other places. Yes. All right. Is it um, then what you're wearing? Yes. And it was created for you? Yes. Do we all know what it is? Yes. 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 We know what it is. Would, uh, would you go up? It's her left arm. <laughs> <laughs> is it safe for anybody to smoke near you? I think so. Really? Entirely, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, they well, fireproofed sort of, oh, it. They fireproofed it, I'm yes. sure. Yes, did they fireproof what you have on? Yes, they did. Oh, said. that's very fortunate. And it's, um, you going to throw it away tonight? Heaven, no. <laughs> well, we all sort of suspect that it's a paper dress that you have. Yes. 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 Arlene is not only uh, Arlene is not only one of the best dressed uh, women around, but also one of the most fashion conscious. And the dress she's wearing, as you figured out, uh, is uh, really well. It's fireproof for one thing, and it's proof of her uh, ability uh, as a fashion plate in another, because it's very beautiful. As I said, we had it designed for her by Syme Luxus. I hope I pronounced right. his name. Syme Luxus. 
And uh, if you'd like to go out and buy it, incidentally, the price tag would be $1,000. What? Yes, which is even more impressive when you consider that, as you've already figured out, it's made entirely of paper. Oh, yeah. I know that all of us would greatly enjoy seeing you model it, Arlene. Uh, yes, would you favor us with that? I certainly shall. There it is. Isn't it lovely? It has to be made of money. Well, Arlene, I'm what can you tell us about this kind of dress, uh, Arlene? Well, it's expensive because of the talent and the creative energy that went into it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it was made for me this morning and uh, uh, Zanes, it is, painted it uh, this morning, and I just uh, tried it on before the show. But, Steve, something marvelous is happening in the fashion industry. Paper things, are, uh, paper fashions, are becoming really more and more important. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, most designers are designing things in paper. Eventually, they will refine them, so they'll really be like material, and they won't wrinkle. You can press this, as a matter of fact. You can press it on the wrong side. It has been fireproofed, as I said before. I see. As a matter of fact, last month in Hartford, Connecticut, there was a paper dress ball. Did you know that? I mm -hmm. did not. Given by the Wadsworth Athenaeum Art Museum. I see. And about 150 ladies turned up in, pa uh, in paper fashion. <laughs> so you see, it's just coming. How did the men turn up? Could we see? Would you like to see some? I would love to. We have some here. All right. We'll open the curtain, which is also made out of paper, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no. And let's see what we have. May we see the first dress, please? Yeah. Ah, there we are. <laughs> Naomi is wearing a dress designed by John Haggins with great big purple and yellow stripes. The paper pattern was hand-painted by Robert Van Austin. Notice Naomi's yellow stockings and purple shoes. They're very shiny. This is what you call the total look in paper. Beautiful. Dress. Tent? Tent dress, yes. We're camping out tonight, fellas. <laughs> <don't forget. laughs> Julian Townshend designed this paper fabric with great big blue, green, and orange flowers with touches of black. I think you'd call this a paper flower garden, Steve. Yes. Thank you very much, Esther. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. May we see the next dress, please? Ah. Now, this is Penny. Penny is wearing a silver pantsuit designed by Margot West. It's trimmed with silver sequins, and the slacks are slightly bell-bottomed. Notice her psychedelic earrings, the newest thing in, in vogue. Gorgeous. I think we have time for just one more. Let's see our finale. There we are. This is Marianne. The paper for Marianne's dress is designed by Jean Silbert. It's patterned with small white dots and great big yellow ones, too. It has sort of a kind of uh, African motif. Beautiful. My paper doll. Well, Arlene, this has been fascinating, and uh, we're very grateful to you and your friends in the paper industry for borrowing these clothes from the uh, Wadsworth uh, Museum, yes. Athenaeum Museum. That's right, and Steve. And thanks to you and your friends very much for joining us. Not at all, Steve. Arlene Bach. Just wanted to scare you to death. I wonder what happens if you go out in the rain or one of those things. Shrink. You'll lose about $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute after this word. The way panel, they are even making chairs out of paper now. Oh, they put it together with a remarkable kind of a strong... Oh! <laughs> Next week, our guest is Rosanna Brodsky. Good night, panel. I've got a secret has been brought to you tonight by New Green Goddess, a color dressing made with green garden herbs and real sour cream. Newest of the unsinkable from Seven Seas.
Miss Palmer's gown by Staviopoulos. This program is pre-recorded. This is John Cannon speaking.